Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the 22nd Sunday of Ordinary Time, Cycle B. Our entrance hymn, hymn number 316 in the new hymn book, Wake Up, My People. All across the nation, on the eve of our independence, to bless our country, people are lonely, we have no belief, wake, wake up, up to my people, people. listen to their story, and something as you do, listen to do the same for me, wake up, wake up my people, wake up, wake up, give us time, wake up my people, So many people are hungry and hopeless Living and hopeless. Cities, people are waiting, hungry people starving, waiting hopefully. Wake up this morning up to my people, as we worship on the 22nd Sunday. As often as you do this, you do the same for me. Wake up, wake up my people, wake up, wake up, give a shout, wake up my people. Of us all. Wake up, promise now to do your best to change tomorrow. Wake up, my people. Wake up and open every door. Wake up, wake up, it's time to love my people evermore. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we glorify you in this glorious morning. And we bless all bodies under the sign of salvation as we awaken in worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of God's Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. We just bow our heads this morning. We come. There's a difference between laws and law. And the law he talks about is from the heart. It's love. Love of God and love neighbor. But all. And a lot of us have not loved God and we love the rituals and we love all the rules and the legalism. How we sing, how we preach, how we look external and peripheral but we have not fallen in love with the heart and the core to love God and love the hopeless and the homeless and the poor just bow our heads and see where we have not loved with the law of love from the interior but get got preoccupied and paralyzed by the external and peripheral and like the Pharisees today just external and flesh and here and now bow your heads to just blessed morning as we come 59th year in independence to really claim our independence in Christ. We are not free until we are free in Christ. We could still be enslaved in sin. Just bow your heads. Idols, we bring before God. We bring the way we treat people. That's what matters most at the core and the essence, the heart of Christianity. The heart of the law is the heart. How we treat our bodies because this body is destined for eternity with God and we bring sin against creation so much hurricanes we pray for either so many other hurricanes threatening around us mainly because some of us recognize sometimes man has been neglectful to mother earth sister sun brother moon all parts of God's creation for us to make us like little gods so I invite you now to share the link and Maybe invite somebody wherever you are this morning. A lot of you are tuning in and locking in. Gong, please invite somebody and share Holy Mass. At least one friend. And together we say, I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, you my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned in my, in my thoughts, thoughts and in my, my words, 
and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord of God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May you forgive us all our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Church is holy, blessed Sunday, the day of the Lord. Touch our hearts and feel the core rhythm of life and hope that God has given us another moment in time. Kyrie. Kyrie. Are we really independent? Lord, what are we celebrating on this Tuesday? And so much of hopelessness and homelessness and hungry people. Lord, we bring all our pain in this COVID time and so much trouble in the world and it doesn't seem like we're coming out of this soon. people who many all of us may have disobeyed Lord and punished not for our sins but by our sins Lord we ask one thing would you forgive us forgive us father forgive us father help us. Lord we will walk with you just lead us Lord we want to be humble to surrender on this blessed morning in this blessed day, through your suffering and through your pain, through your suffering, with forgiveness, with forgiveness, take my life into the world. Somebody cry out, let's stand, let's sing wherever you are, and bring your heart to worship. thank you in advance for Jesus Christ who have come in the person. Amen. We glorify God. Glory to God. Lord, in spite of so much, we just give you praise and trust you'll take us through this. This too will end. Glory to God in the highest. Prayer. We surrender, we humbly commit to you. 
Instruments praise you. Let everything that has breath, Lord, let the voices praise you. We give you praise. We glorify. We magnify you. Name above all names. We just bow our heads and allow the word of God to find a home in our hearts and really jolt us and shake us up this morning. And close your eyes. Lord, you're God of might. You're the giver of every good gift. Lord, pour into human hearts this morning the love of your holy name and so that by deepening our sense of reverence you may nurture in each one of us what is good and by your watchful care keep safe what you have nurtured inside of us through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity holy spirit one god forever and ever amen please sit to listen to god's word Reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Amen. Moses said to the people, Now, Israel, take notice of the laws and customs that I teach you today and observe them, that you may, that you may have life and may enter and take possession of the land the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You must add nothing to what I command you and take nothing from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God just as I lay them down for you. Keep them, observe them, and they will demonstrate to the peoples your wisdom and understanding. When they come to know all these laws, they will exclaim, no other people is as wise and prudent as this great nation. And indeed, what great nation is there that has its gods so near as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call to him? And what great nation is there that has laws and customs to match this whole law that I put before you today? The word of the Lord. Thanks. We just bow our heads in the Old Testament. Jewish tradition was steeped in laws. You know in Exodus there's a law for the Ten Commandments and they started to build on it because man's heart was very hard-hearted and God had to put something precious around divine life. And that's why we have laws for children and for marriage and anything that is special and sacred and reverent must be protected. And the law of the Deuteronomy writings were very serious and Moses is telling him, don't add or subtract anything. It's to save, preserve that inner life in you, divine life infused at baptism. We ask our psalmist to bless us as we just close your eyes, church, and let the word minister to us. And 
to be present in our hearts. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. Live presence of the Lord. Amen. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. Lord, who shall dwell on your holy mountain? Amen. Amen. He who walks without fault. He who works with justice and speaks the truth from his heart. The just. just want to welcome the letter to St. James telling us that this law will be planted in flesh, in your heart, in your soul, in your very being, and that will save you and save your soul. The law is supposed to give us life eternal. A reading from the letter of St. James. It is, all, it is all that is good, everything that is perfect, which is given us from above. Amen. It comes down from the Father of all light. With him, there is no such thing as alterations, no shadow of a change. By his own choice, he made his children by the message of the truth, so that we should be a sort of first fruits of all that he had created. Accept and submit to the word which has been planted in you and can save your soul. Amen. But you must do what the word tells you and not just listen to it and deceive yourselves. Pure, unspoilt religion in the eyes of God our Father is this. Coming to the help of orphans and widows when they need it and keeping oneself uncontaminated by the word. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We just bow our heads. We heard from the Old Testament, the Psalm, and let us in James about the word being planted and, and fleshed into your very soul. Inside is an inside work. We hear what Jesus has to say about hypocrisy and how the scribes and the Pharisees from the church were just trying to trick him. They had the law, but they were interested in the laws. Not the law, law laws, the litany of laws. Please stand and welcome the gospel. Sure. 
children by the message of the truth, so that we should be a, first, a sort of first fruits of all that he created. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The words of my mind and my lips and my heart proclaim good news. The Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. And they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with unclean hands. That is, without washing their hands. For the Pharisees and the Jews in general followed the, tra the tradition of the elders and never ever will eat without washing their arms as far as the elbow. And on returning from the marketplace, they would never eat without sprinkling themselves. There are many other observances which have been handed down to them concerning the washing of cups and pots and bronze dishes. So these Pharisees and these scribes asked him, why do your disciples not respect the tradition of the elders, but eat their food with unclean hands? And Jesus answered them, it was you hypocrites that Isaiah so rightly prophesied in his passage in Holy Scripture. His people honors me only with lip service, but their hearts are far from me. They worship, they only offer me is only worthless. The doctrines they teach are only human traditions. They put aside the commandment of God and they cling to human traditions. Isaiah says. He called the people to him and said again, listen to me all of you, understand. Nothing that goes into a man from outside can make that man unclean, nothing. It is the things that come out of the man that makes him unclean. For it is from within man's heart, evil intentions emerge. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, malice, deceit, indecency, envy, slander, pride, and folly. All these evil things come from within and makes a man unclean. My brothers and sisters, this is good news. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, let your word minister from inside. It's an inside work. Lord, we thank you for your word and your word is a lamp. It's a lamp. Lord, let your word implanted, infused in us, in our soul, as James says today, reverberate and live out truth and witness. So wherever you are, and whatever you do this Sunday, in this 22nd Sunday, be a witness to the law of love only. Amen. We sit as we welcome the word of God. Amen. Church, I want to go through the gospel because it's very, very powerful today. And I want you to go through the kind of people and the context that is, it is happening from. You always hear scribes and Pharisees. And those are very religious, churchy people like you and me. They were churched. They were very religious. And I want to invite us to understand and maybe look in the mirror and see if there are any Pharisaic thinking and perspective inside of us. All of us have it. The scribes are very good people. They were law keep, keeper. They would wash their hands all up here. And they start from the finger. They have a law to do this and do this and do this. And then when they and, and wipe from here and here. They were steeped in the law. Nobody said the law is wrong. Look at what they were doing. They were religious people. They were strict. They observed the law to the teeth. They were, but they were blind and they were narrow-minded. And they were fixated at the, at the law alone. They were fake they were religious trickery. They were self-righteous. And they was always there to trick God. 
And that's what went wrong because they were hypocrites. Hypocrites is acting. That's why Jesus says, I want little children because children do whatever they want. They just let it be. They, they, they don't pretend, mocking pretenders. A lot of our Christians who say we believe and are labeled Christians are mocking pretenders. Children do not know how to pretend. They will take little tools and they'll play with it. They are what they are. And that is why scripture is clear. Jesus could deal with sin. He came for sin, but he can't deal with hypocrisy, pretentious worship, and fake worship. We sing it, we sing it, we sing it, we get he, 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 he. But inside of us, evil intent is not what goes into a man and what you eat makes you young. It's what comes out. It is very clear. Just the other day, everybody's coming to Mass, and I know regular worshipers. And a lady wrote, you know, she came, she said, Father, they forgot to wash your hands. And I'm saying, you forgot the gospel. Did you get the word? And she never called me back because I asked her, what you got from the gospel? I can't remember. But she can remember the priest made a mistake. Because sometimes you're steeped with the color. And that is what the scribes, the scribes were lawmakers and lawgivers. And the Pharisees were law keepers. They were interested in the law. It's very important. But the beauty of it today, there is law holds L-A-W-S. What you do and what you don't do. And there's law, the law of love. For God, that's why the Shema in the Deuteronomy and the Old Testament, the Jews, wherever you go, they have it on the, 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 the shoulder, they have it on the hand, they have it on the doorstep. You must love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, all your, and then you must love neighbor. It's both in one. When you love God, St. Augustine says, love God and do whatever you want after. Because when you love God, you'll do whatever you want to please him after. Do you love God? Do you love him from inside? And where is the human heart? The Pharisees had one thing right. One thing, you must wash your hand before you eat. They will do good in COVID. COVID. They will do good. Because they were, they were very steeped in externalism and the peripheral. And they lost the essence. There's a calypso, the law is a fill in the blanks. You know it. It's a hate, love thing with law. Everybody is a lawyer now. Everybody knows the law. Everybody has a lawyer. And everybody wants a child to be a lawyer. And on the other hand, and you do what you want, it's my right, I can do what I want, let it, let it be. There's always a hate-love relationship with law. We are litigious people, if that's a word, I'll check it, litigious. Which means, we're just interested in lawsuit. Everything I'll bring my lawyer. Can't spell you a lawyer, no, but you bring a lawyer. That's where we are, because we're interested in laws. Jesus is steep today. He says, you know, is it law ho? And they were trying to trick him. One day he was scared. He says, they says, law, um, Jesus, Jesus, the same Pharisees, can you give me one law? Because they're trying to trick. Religious hypocrites is trying to trick. Show me in the Bible to prove themselves. And they said clearly, he says, um, yes, I could give you the 613 laws. But um, because it was hard to condense all the hundreds of laws to come down to one and Jesus says, yes, I could, can. he's good at one-liners. Just what he says to the woman, the adulterous woman, he says, you know, you would all sin through the first stone. Jesus good at one-liners. You know what Jesus said to them? Yes, I will condense it. You know what it is? Love God and love neighbor and with all your heart, all your might, all your soul and all your strength. And they were petrified because how could you love and love neighbor? I'm not into loving neighbor. I can love God and I can love church. But don't tell me about neighbor. He fixed them. And that is why we are in a literature society because we want law. But you understand, in the, in the Old Testament, um, you had to take the laws. You had 613 laws. And the reason for the law, and I want you to get this right this time, is very important. Whenever you have something precious, and whenever you have to have a re revere something, if it's your wife, that's why when you're married and you leave in the church, the groom is on the right-hand side and his hand is open and wide and he, 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 he hugs his wife to tell anybody in the medieval time, I'm ready, I'm ready to pull out my sword so I can protect this woman because the more married I am, is the more you want to grab her. Because when you have something precious, you have to protect it. You have to protect children, you have to protect a game. When anything up... You, when you have something sacred and the law, you must protect it. And that is why you have the precious nature of divine life. And that is why you have law. 
Imagine you had cricket and all fours and you do whatever you want. Um, do says Trump and whatever. You must have law to make it fun. People love, imagine Lara playing, playing cricket and you have no law. And if, when you have a new game, sometimes you have to go make the law. If, you, if you, um, you're playing cricket, you say, if you hit the ball, you reach by the fence, it's, it's six over the fence. You have to have law. Law necessary, yes. It's important because you want to protect sacred marriage, sacred children. Just the other day in papers, yesterday I see a 59-year-old man is having penetrative sex with a nine-year-old. You have to protect children. You must have law. He must be brought to the court. And that is why real players in physical world marvel at the law around football, around um, games. You must, in competitions, you must have boundaries. And the same thing happens when you, you transfer it to the precious life and divine life and spiritual life and immoral life and the integrity of integral living. It is important for eternal life. You must protect it. So you must have law. And you must have boundaries. James says today, James chapter 1 verse 17. And Jeremiah says, that same law from the olden days, that was inscribed on concrete in Moses' time. And that was thrown on concrete. But I write my law now, the law of love, my interior love, in you, in your soul, in your very being. Because of baptism, you were infused so the law now is no longer on a tablet, on concrete, on brick and mortar. The law now is infused in your heart. Jeremiah says it. It's in your flesh. You can have everything and you have love. It's a waste of time. It's clashing symbols. You can have everything. The best voice, the best preaching, the best church, the best liturgy. You can cover your head from head to toe. But you don't have human love for neighbor and love for the homeless and the hopeless. Waste of time. And that's why he says it's planted, it's rooted in the human soul. And if you abort it like abortion, you haven't gotten rid of the child. Just, you just, you're just a, a pregnant woman of a, a murdered child. You haven't gotten rid of a child. And that's why it's very important. James is, is saying it's now in your heart because it's intrinsic. It's inside. It's, it's part of you. And I come to the second point. Because you have to protect it and it's spiritual life and it's divine life and its morality and eternal life and the integrity of inter in integral living it's inside it must become second nature it must become part of your life it must become flesh of flesh and blood of blood and bones of bones you think when lara is batting or kishon well um walcott um as they're going to they just, they just throw out a book and say, let me read now. You must pelt it so and then so and then so. no it's just come, it's come second nature well, walk out your own, and how you prepare that is just, he doesn't even think him because all the law and the rules have become part of him. That's why Lara could just go on bat, and Walker could just go on throw, and these people could sing because it becomes second nature, because the law was, the, 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 the law was made for man and not man for the law. You have to know which one you put in first. So when you have the law to protect your game or whatever, you and it is protected, it must become part of you. You can't just go and think about it. You're playing cricket and you say, okay, the law book say you must raise your hand and hit so on. By that time, you're out already. It must become second nature. It must become part of your blood of blood and the soul of soul and the flesh of flesh become part of you. It's fair. It must, it's, it, it, you must order the law. That's why Deuteronomy and Numbers is magnified in Matthew 27. Because when God judges us, he's asking us seven questions. When was I naked and hungry and thirsty and needed shelter and whatever. And those who were Christians and those who are saints, we say, Lord, when did you see us? Because it was second nature. You see somebody hungry. You see somebody house burned down. You just naturally from your soul love homeless and love hopeless. That's important, church. A lot of us have religion, laws, but no law of love and compassion and concern for the other, including the poorest of the poor. That is why God bless my heart to have seen and blessed Father Makan, a simple man. And if you heard his eulogy and his stuff, he was a saint, I believe. He always says, you must be a person, not for the poor, but of the poor. The four is laws. 
You do this, you do this, you put it on Facebook, and you have the minister shaking hand. That's four. That's image. But of is that somebody, you have food, just give it away. It's of. And that is, he, he, was, he got sick. They had to take him to Grenada because he had an anxiety that religious people were not responding. They were going to daily mass and not responding to what the mass calls us for. To witness and to live out eucharistically the body of Christ as his pain in. So now that you receive me, the body of Christ, you will throw yourself to the broken body of Christ. I want to just make it, categorize it into basically the homeless and the hopeless. Not man, life is so much. Because he says, I write, religion is not about doing good things and religious things like following rituals and customs and Sunday stuff and human tradition and having petitions said. That's not religion. Religion is helping the other. The heart must move for the homeless and the hopeless. He also gave me a story. He says there was a 70-year-old priest. He went to a village and they were preaching and he preached about alcoholic and all I'm thinking. And they say, Father, um, um, don't preach that now because the people here are our alcoholics. He said, but I have to preach that because they wanted to hear things that tickle the air. So everything they preached about, they would tell them what to preach because they were in a comfort zone. And then one day he got vexed and he, he preached. It was five minutes, unlike me, who is 500 minutes. He says, um, I have three points for you. He says, three things. I want you to write it down. I know a lot, a lot of you will be reporting me to the bishop after this. He says, one, there are millions of homeless and hungry people in this parish. Good. He says, secondly, second point, some people don't care damn. Did I say damn? The third, he says, the only thing that some of us will remember is father said damn at the pulpit. I didn't, didn't hear the root that there are millions of people in your parish poor, but they hear damn. Report it to the bishop. So the bishop will come down and peanut and beat Chris. No. The crux of the matter is where you're listening to is where you want to hear. Because we are, we are worshiping external and not internal and it's inside. So the three outcome of this homily that this man did for three seconds. One, he caught their attention. I see Harold clapping. He was not sleeping today. Secondly, he caught the, the spirit of the... And then he made people shake up and look into their heart about the pharisaic hypocritical nature of the human heart. It's not about the ritual and whether the camera is good and the song is good and the candles are lit. Those things, it's not about what you do on a Sunday. It's not the bad worship you give me. It's what you do to your neighbor. That's important, church. That's the hypocrisy of the legalism that we get caught up in. And, and it's very easy to, to, to put religion and think the other day, I say, Father, bless me, Kana, it's a dual walk. Hello. When I go to prison, Father, bless the money now. We're going to put on our walk to kill people. People would tie religion as a ritual. William Barclay says, once, this is a real story and I hate, I'm not, I'm respectfully, I love Muslims. And he says, and it can happen to Christians too, at the Angelus. He says, once a Muslim was running down, this is a live story with him, pursuing an enemy. And the Azam, I think that's when you had prayer midday, um, song did, and you got the horns, and the Muslim jump off the horse, roll out the mat, and started to pray. Fine, perfect. And then when you, Hassan finish, he roll out the mat, jump back on the horse, and run into the enemy. That happens to us sometimes. We fall about things and come to mass, and go back and curse the neighbor. We come back and say, the Angela, stop, and then we go and do that. It, it just happens because there is a correlation somehow with hypocrisy and legalism. This is what Jesus is condemning with the pharisaic, and a lot of us have pharisaic thinking in our hearts. Today we have to purify it. Love God and love God above all. It's very important. And love neighbor. Today the gospel is very, very, very powerful. It says, the law is beautiful. There's beauty. But there's the obsession and the paralysis and the legalism and the lack of the spirit. The sacraments are, are rituals. But what, you be, what it becomes in you, inside of you, like Lara, like Walcott, like the, four, the All Fours game, you're just naturally playing because the law and the, and the rules become just part of you. You stand up, Mikel, and you sing because the, the words and the music become second nature. That's what it has happened with the law of love and the law of love of God and love of neighbor and the law of the church in you. That's very important. 
Otherwise, it will get steeped, as the Pharisees would do. Imagine you're having a football game and you have eight referees and three lawyers. You lose the spirit and ten policemen. It had to have a kind of big, a mix. It's, it's a kind of a differential between the essential and the peripheral. And that's, and, that, and that's important. The church had to get rid of all the ostrich feathers long time. When the Pope come in, people fanning him because that was a destruction. Sometimes all of this is destruction because the host and the beauty and how you feel must translate into action for the other, especially the least little last loss. And that's why he says it's not what's outside that going into you that makes you unclean. It's what come out to you. There's an old saying in Jewish tradition. The Jewish believe that there were four sins. Jewish tradition say you have four major sins. Idolatry, incest, murder, and the worst is guess what? Gossip. It's what comes out to you. Gossip is worse than adultery, murder, and incest, according to Jewish tradition. It's what comes out. Sometimes we say things to people. Even your silence, somebody is standing up, and you, you, you stay there, and you listen to it, and you don't say nothing. That is gossip. If you have nothing good to say about anybody, say nothing. And that's the heart of the law. The core and the heart of the law is the heart. It's an inside walk. It's like an apple, looking rosy and nice, and inside rotten. It's like a whitewashed tomb. It's a bulka inside. Looking good outside. Preaching well. Inside a bundle of bones. And that is why Deuteronomy and Numbers says the central core, the inside, is shimmer. Love God first. Love neighbor and do whatever you want after. Because when you love God, you'll be free and pleased to do anything that is pleasing to God. Otherwise, it just becomes a hindrance to what you want to do. This week I saw in Port of Spain a kind of sizable fattish policeman, fine, and I saw a thing all over him, and he real garbed. He can't run me down. <laughs> because all the apparatus and the external can't make him run and do his walk. I would test him, but I'm just telling you, he real loaded, he real toting. Because the law is a burden, maybe. So we have to manage the tension between the law and grace, between the letter of the law and the spirit. Scripture says clearly, if you come in to worship me and you have bad mind, don't come. I don't want a sacrifice. I want mercy. You know, much of us can't go on to, to worship now because we have bad mind. Drop whatever you come in, reconcile first. I want mercy. The, the tension between and the dilemma between love and hypocrisy. The worst thing that God could ever tell you is, I don't know you, you hypocrite. But I went to church. What? Church? That's not what I'm about. I'm about love. The inside walk. Clean feet, clean hands can never be compensated for clean hearts. The heart is where everything is. That's the, that's the essential question today. The source. I ask you as I close. What would you avoid in life? Question. And key into me all those who are locked on, and those in the choir, what of the four of these you will avoid? A malju eye, a wicked eye, treacherous friend, a worthless neighbor, or a bad, devious, corrupt heart? Harold, which one would you avoid? You have to choose one, Harold. You can't choose all four. The, he says he will avoid the bad, deceitful, devious, corrupt heart. Braden, which one would you like? Which one would you desire as your girlfriend? A good eye, long eyelashes, faithful friend, good neighbor, or a good, clean, pure, sincere, good intention heart? He says the goodness of heart. At the end of the day, church, that's where it is. And the heart must lead, you know, the, not silver vessels. It must lead to hunger, not the, to feeding the hungry. The decor must lead to shelter, and the golden garments must lead to clothing of the poor, hopeless and homeless. That's what he says. Apparently, hell awaits anybody whose heart is indifference to the homeless and the hopeless, the least, the last, and last. Because when it comes from here, it will automatically go to the least, little, last, and lost, a la Saint Michael Coburn. A man of the poor. If you see what people are writing about him, 
he was madly crazy in love for the poor because it came from a good, generous, good intention, clean, pure, sincere, inside walk the human heart. Close your eyes. Choir will lead us. Look in the mirror. Question your heart. Try and form it. Bring your heart together. As Ezekiel 36 says, I will give you a new heart, a new spirit. I remove, remove hypocrisy and all the laws and I'll put one law. Love God. Purify love. You bring all our attentions today. Lord, purify the human heart. It's messed up. There's corruption. If it's one thing you have to say about me, at my eulogy, just say he had a good heart. That's all. One line. Have a good heart. That's what happened to Father Michael Makana, Catholic priest in the Archdiocese of Port of Spain. A pure giant of the poor. Refine us, fire, Lord. Purify, Lord. Cut me, prune me. Do the inside walk now in that apple. But save me from that eternal hell because, Lord, apparently hell awaits many who are indifferent to the homeless and the other and the homeless. Holy means separate from the world and consistent with the law of love. Love is for the other. I choose to be holy, holy Lord. Lord, sanctify me from within. Let what I receive, Father, make me an imitator, imitator of your love. Ready to do your will. Ready to do your Wherever you are, can you touch your heart? We pray. We hum that quietly. You know, we pray for those who have died and have no one to pray for them. So many have died in COVID and have no closure. Almost five million. So much, maybe 2,000 more in our country. We pray for Barbara Rodriguez, or Patrick Lewis from Visabella, who gave his whole life in council. And Lord, the spirit of that man reigns. Michael Macan, Father, who was a man, you could read his heart, Lord, by his work for the poor. Sheila Foster from Canada, Jean from Mamaral, a woman of culture who did work amongst the poorest of the poor. Errol Andrews, Nigel. Governor Daniel Ghani, Elizor, son, Clifford Prasad, listening, all those from Miami, he has passed away from Brasso. Pastor Ramdi, our Pentecostal brother, who with us and living waters, attend to the needs of the people in this community. Lord, reward him with your goodness. Gerald McMillan, the father of Rose and Allison and Carol who come every week and clean this place. Elaine Sukdin who have died. And those who will die tonight. We pray for healing for Akil and Teresa Reyes and Sister T and Peter Joseph and Lisa Musifa, Merlin and Monica Randine. Pray for Buddha for Alicia Singh and Martin Zahadath. And Thora Mutu have done so great work in our son of a carriage and throughout the Caribbean. Wendy and Francis anniversary from Cookie. Thanksgiving for Rose and Andre in our community. We pray for 24-7 intercessory team in St. Dominic's and the Council Ministry. Christine Fulchen and family. And all our family have done so much work in our poor ministry here. Sharon Bermudez, who have been constant. So many who live, give from the interior, Lord. Reward them. Tamara and also Chris and Darwin. We pray for the people of Haiti, Afghanistan, and our Caribbean people. And we pray for a start back for our economy and our school, Lord, and many people who may be keeping us back, Lord. We pray for the common good, listening to Pope Francis and the church, Lord, to take away fear and see the common need for the other. Lord, purify the human heart, refine us fire. My heart's one desire. There is a human heart. Ezekiel said, I will take away a heart of stone and hypocrisy, steeped in rituals and external 
only about the external I want the inside walk is what comes out of a man makes him unclean we pray for Elma Batiste and her family Sundries Road we pray that anyone listening we need help house has been burnt down almost eight children and five adults 30 people without a room commit your life commit your resources commit your prayer somebody in need if it doesn't move your heart what else religion doesn't matter purify to help purify my heart lord make new hearts hallelujah i want you to key in church wherever you are put in what you got from the word of god deuteronomy and james and mark and write something for somebody else and investigate the human heart question your heart look in the mirror put your heart against the mirror and form your heart my heart's one desire not change our church not is to be human Human means to be holy. Human means taking care of humanity. Human means be comfortable with your identity, who you are, whatever you are. Exactly what Father Markham became. Comfortable in his own sin and his own skin and his own background. Through the poor, through the heart of the other, not your own. Ready to ready to do lobby praise you ready to do can we praise god lord we praise you lord we glorify you lord we magnify we thank you lord for this word lord, let, lord we glorify let the instruments praise you lord let the voices praise you lord let the drums praise you lord lord we praise you for your word infusing us implant in us, Lord, rooted in us, a heart of flesh, Lord. Take away stone, Lord, and recognize when that is what goes into us and not what is external and peripheral, but what's rooted in the very heart of the heart, which is the heart of the law, which is love of God and love of neighbor. Hallelujah. We raise our right hand in solidarity to this church. We thank God for the church of the poor, not for the poor. And we have started to take away all the frills because long time was so much of frills, you haven't got to the true worship. We, we were steeped in how we dress. And what we, those are good. Those are essential. I'm not saying no. But they have a place and a balance and attention. You have to build the letter from the spirit, the paralysis from the freedom. We pray our creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And on the third day He rose again from the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. And life everlasting. Amen. Which other country is named after God itself? Our country is named after God. Imagine there's a true living God, the Trinity. We raise our right hand in solidarity. Well, no, we stand at attention. Wherever you are, church, we celebrate who we are. 59 years of independence and bring um, discipline, production, tolerance, Lord, to our forefront, Lord, that God bless this land.
when we move to the altar of the Eucharist, where we get food for the inside work to be done to move the human heart and form it for the sake of the other. Amen? Amen. Amen. And with your spirit, we lift them up to the Lord. It is right and just. Should lead us to move our human heart. Lord, you are indeed holy, and from the world's beginning, you are ceaselessly at work. So the entire human race may become holy as you yourself are holy. 
Look, we pray upon your people's offering and pour on them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we are now called sons and daughters. Lord, indeed, we were once lost, and our hearts were devious and corrupt and hypocritical. But you never, you never ever left us, and we cannot even approach you, but you still loved us with the greatest love for your Son, who alone is just. He was handed over to death for our sake to the wood of a cross at Calvary, and before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he decided to desire a sit meal with his disciples. He sat and ate with them. He took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it. And he said, take this all of you, eat. This is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. Lord, change our hearts. Just bow, church. All these rituals, sacraments, are effective and efficacious and have value. It's when you mismanage it and put attention on the external and the preoccupation and the paralysis like the Pharisees and the scribes, only about laws. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took chalice, knowing he was about to reconcile all things in himself through the blood to be shed at the cross at Calvary. And he filled the chalice with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, he handed the chalice over to his disciples. He said, take this all of you drink. This is the chalice of my blood. The blood of a new and eternal covenant, it will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Church, God is present, and this is the same God from Deuteronomy, from Moses, from the Ten Commandments, and the same God today. Just open your hands and ask as we sing, change your heart. Change our hearts, Lord. Let your presence penetrate. Change our hearts, O oh Lord. Make it ever true. Make it ever true. Change our hearts, Lord, from within. Change my heart, O oh Lord. May I become more like you. May I be like you. You are present, and I believe you. You are pot, I'm just clay, I'm sand. Work me. Mold me, fashion me, cut me, prune me. Father, may me punish me here, but save me for save me from hell. Save me for eternal life with you. Love of the poor. This is what I say. Your petition can you just put a heart on social media to let people know that you are in love with this God you are in love with the church the law of the church and the law of love love God and love neighbor as self and to love like him if you love God you to love what he loves and God loves the poor spend a few moments in silence let it be an inside work don't let me be any hypocrites who act and pretend. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we Therefore, we celebrate the memorial of your son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace. Father, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, looking forward to his second coming. Lord, we offer you our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim, who reconciles to you the entire human race. Look kindly, compassionate, Father, on those you unite yourself by the sacrifice of your son and grind by the power and the Holy Spirit as they partake of this one bread and one chalice. They may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit 
which heals every form of human division and every form of human corrupt, devious heart. Lord, be pleased to be always in communion in mind and heart, together with Francis I, our Pope, Charles Jason Gordon, our Bishop. Lord, remember us to work, come for the coming of your kingdom until, Lord, we stand before you that hour when you call us saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, our most chaste spouse, our patron saint, St. Dominic, pray for us, and all the blessed apostles and saints, with our deceased brothers and sisters, especially Clifton and Patrick and Father McCann and so many we've offered this mass for, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. You can key in church who you have, somebody may have died, somebody in your family, you can recall every time we of a mass is the mystical body of Christ and we always pray we have the privilege for the dead we pray for many people who have nobody to pray for them who have died eternal rest be granted unto them O Lord may they rest in peace may their soul and the soul of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace Amen. then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a whole new creation father we will sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Jesus Christ who lives for all eternity through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, we sing, formed by divine teaching, the prayer that he taught us, that came from the mouth of God, shared by universal languages and religions. He wants corrupt, hypocritical, fake, pretentious hearts, only interested in the external, superficial, peripheral, and not the essence of the core, the inside, the human heart. Lord, grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin. Father, keep us safe from distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. clean with the scribes and the Pharisees and we too may have that Pharisaic thinking you said you hypocrites Lord never utter those words to us 
We are mocking pretenders. We're making the religion a puppy show. Never ever, Lord, let any one of us ever be labeled. Lord, grant peace. Look not on our hearts, Lord. Look at the fate of your church. Grant peace and unity in accordance with your will. Where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer somebody a sign of peace. Put our hands to our heart and the church tells us beat it three times because of the pain we allow to grieve the Savior. the Lamb of God who takes with the sin of the world happier those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my roof. Only say the word of my soul. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ keep us all safe for everlasting life. Amen. We sing one verse, soul of my Savior. We just ask God to bless us. And those who can't receive him sacramentally, come Lord, at least spiritually. And I desire you, come. Soul, Savior. My Savior, sanctify my prayers, body of Christ, be Thou my Savior, God. look beyond. Just close your eyes wherever we are. And when we ask God to look beyond and see deep inside of us in the human heart. Come to us 
And since we cannot receive you because of public health regulations, that Lord, never let us ever be separated. Look beyond distance and time and space and come, Father, spiritually. Inside work you have begun. And Lord, change human hearts in this world from so much selfishness. Help us to see the common good. Look beyond our own families and our own environments and see the common good for the world. Amen. Just bow your heads and you ask, it, it starts in the human heart, what is your desire? And just open your hands and praise and invite somebody and pray for somebody and we come to the close of worship. And as we said today, the worship must come from inside and thank God for the law. I'm not too much interested in the laws and the litany of the laws. There is sins, plural, and there's sin, which is the root and the cause. And inside one s makes a difference to worship and to honor you and to celebrate in your church all i have inside of me i want a pure heart i don't want a good eye i don't want a good friend i don't want wealth only i want a good well-intentioned christian well-formed Catholic human heart. Lift up presence of praise. Can we praise Mika? Can you help us? Lord, we praise. Lord, we glorify. Thank God for musicians and thanks for the music. Thank God for your heart of music. Listen to their heart. Bless their heart. 
Give them good example. We stand, Lord. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you. Have your way. We give you our hearts, our soul. As James says, it's been rooted. The law now is no longer concrete. And tablets is human flesh. And that is why it becomes second nature flesh of flesh, bones of bones. Sir Michael the Archangel, defend us in this day of battle. We all save God against the wickedness, stay to the devil. May God rebuke them. And with our Prince of the Heavenly Host. By the power of cast them into the house of Satan. Who wander through this world seeking, seeking the ruin of souls. souls. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, again, the food of charity, it may confirm your hearts, our hearts rather, and stir us within to serve you in our neighbor. To Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just thank you very much to those who have been supporting us. We were able to get over some of our expenses. We are still short $5,000 for operational cost. Also, there's a family in our community that got, the house got bur um, burnt down at, you know, about 30, 30 people homeless. If anybody's listening, thank you. We just want to remind you, on Tuesday, Independence Day, our community here in Pinal will be hosting We Are Here Still, Independence Edition. It will be on Trinity TV from 9.15 around there right after Mass and 6 p.m. and on Facebook, 4 p.m. on catholicteaching.org on our Facebook, um, 8 o'clock in the morning, 6.30 and 8 o'clock. So just look at our Facebook page, okay? We'll put, we should trade up soon that we have an independence edition of um, We Are Here Still. I am talking to some priests to see what's happening in the country. It is a kind of encore from last year. Amen? So we just want to thank all those who have joined us, thank those who are with us, and we continue to journey. A lot of people have been giving us stuff, okay? And I really thank you for contributing to the poor. That's what the church is, a church not for the poor, hand me down, but a church of the poor. It becomes second nature that our worship leads us to care from the heart for the sake of those who are homeless, hopeless, least little last, lost, lonely. Amen? Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May he come down upon you, remain with you. Preserve you from all that is evil and grant you everlasting life. Mass has ended. Go glorify God with your lives. We want to thank all you music ministers, our young girl and boy here, all the way from Juan Diablo. Great spirit. Andy Hudlin, Henderson, and Justin. Thank you for young hearts. Amen? Our recessional hymn is... We stand for God. Amen. Supreme and Lord. Shine.